For the problems below, find the appropriate critical value given the sample size and confidence level. So we're looking for T critical values here, T alpha divided by two critical values. Recall that when you're dealing with T values, you have to consider the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are based on the sample sizes. So for example, in this first problem, the N is 29, degrees of freedom would be 28. We just take one away from the sample size. So whenever you're working with a T value, you have to know the degrees of freedom. We're going to find these critical T values on the T table we used earlier. The T table that we used in earlier problems, though, was used primarily to get Z values at the very bottom of the table, right? In this case, however, we're not doing that. We're actually looking for T values, so we need to look at this leftmost column, which we never paid attention to before. That leftmost column contains degrees of freedom. Those degrees of freedom, like for example in our first problem, 28, they're located first, right? So you'd find 28, and then you go over to the other column over here that has the appropriate tail area you're looking for. Because we're looking for T alpha divided by two values, the tail area is gonna be alpha divided by two. So we need to find alpha divided by two in this top row. Once we find that, we come down to our degrees of freedom, which is gonna be listed in our leftmost column. And at that point, we find the T value we're looking for. So that's the main difference when we were looking for Z values, we just went straight to the bottom every time. Here, we're not gonna go all the way down. We're gonna stop at our corresponding degrees of freedom, which will be found in this leftmost column. All right, so let's look at the first problem that we're going to be dealing with. The first example says that N is 29 and the confidence level is 98. All right, so if you're given that information that N is 29 and the confidence level is 98, we can infer two important things. The degrees of freedom, it's just gonna be this n minus one. So in that case, it'll be 29 take away one or 28, of course, right? We need that value to go to our table. And then we're going to need to figure out alpha divided by two. Well, when the confidence level is 98%, it means that alpha is 0 0.02 or 2%. And that means that alpha divided by two is half of that, which would be 0 0.01. And it's this alpha divided by two value that we have to go look up in our table along with our degrees of freedom. So now that we have those quantities for the first problem, let's go to our table and get the solution. Okay, so we're looking at 0.01 and 28 degrees of freedom. The 0.01 column is found here. And let's scroll down to get to 28 degrees of freedom. Okay, so 28 degrees of freedom row tells us that the number we're looking for is 2.467, 2.467. Okay, so the first one is 2.467. All right, just as a check, whenever you get your T answer, make sure that it is larger than the corresponding Z value would be, because they're always larger. So essentially, for 98%, the critical Z alpha divided by 2 value is 2.326. You see this one is a little larger at 2.467. That's how it should be. The T alpha divided by 2 values are always a little larger than your Z alpha divided by 2 values. Okay, so let's go to the next one now. In order to answer the next one, we have to know its degrees of freedom and its alpha divided by 2 value. Well, N equals 19 in that problem. So for N equals 19, the degrees of freedom of course is 18, right? Just N minus one. The confidence level is 80%. So if the confidence level is 0.80, the alpha level is 0.20 because 80 and 20 add up to 100. And then from there, we can decide that alpha divided by two is half of 20 or of course 0 0.10. So let's go look up this value, alpha equals 0 0.10 and this value We'll find both of those on our T table, and then we'll have our corresponding T value. Okay, so we're looking at 0 0.10 and 18 degrees of freedom. The 0 0.10 column is our very first column, and 18 degrees of freedom, we'll have to scroll down to C, so let's do that. And there we have it, and you see the answer is 1.330. Okay, so we found the answer for the second one to be 1.330. Okay, let's do this next problem here. For n equals 15 and a confidence level of 99%. All right, so for that problem, if n is 15, we know that the degrees of freedom will be 14, one less than n. And then the confidence level in that problem is 0.99 or 99%. 
that means that our alpha is 0 0.01, and that means that alpha divided by 2 is half of that at 0 0.005. Okay, so we'll look up that alpha divided by 2 value and that degrees of freedom to find our critical T value. Let's go to the table and do that now. So now we're looking up 0 0.005 and 14 degrees of freedom. 0 0.005 is this column here. And let's scroll down to we see 14 degrees of freedom. Okay, that's the next to last value there we see on the right hand side, it's 2.977, 2.977. Okay, so we found the answer to be 2.977. All right, and the last value we have to look up here is when n equals equal to 27 and the confidence level is 90%. All right, so for n equals 27, the degrees of freedom will, of course, be 26. And for the confidence level of 90%, alpha will be 10% or 0 0.10. And then, of course, alpha divided by 2 is 5% or 0 0.05. So we look up alpha divided by 2 and the corresponding degree of freedom of 26 to find the t value. Let's go to the table and do that then. So we're looking at 0 0.05 and 26 degrees of freedom. The 0 0.05 column is the second column there, and we're looking up 26 degrees of freedom, so we have to scroll down to find that. Okay, so right there at the bottom of our screen, we see the 1.706, 1.706. Okay, so we found the answer to be 1.706. All right, that's our final one.